Hi, finally, I made it. I'm hopefully on the air. Let me know in your comments if you can see me because we just had a technical glitch. Took me a while to get on or to get it sorted out. We've just come back from a marathon trip to Asia, particularly spent most of my time in Pune, India with my family. I went to see my 91 year old mom. I posted a picture with her uh, about a week or 10 days ago. Um, and so many of you got a chance to see what she's like. And uh, if you can hear me, see me, let me know. I'm gonna turn to Danny to see if he can see any comments. Um, and also I'd love to share one or two photos with you from my trip. And uh, so Danny's gonna punch those photos up, but he will let me know if all is good. So we are still so jet lagged, Danny and I, and uh, been trying to sleep it off. And it's, uh, I just heard the doorbell. Um, I just heard the doorbell. So anyway, today, what I wanted to talk about is six sensory beings and what it means to be a six sensory being. So a question that keeps coming up is uh, people write to me or they write on Facebook and they say things like, um, how, uh, like if you have a transformative event or if you uh, have a, um, if, you, if you have like a life-changing experience, how do you hold on to that? How do you stay in that experience? It's a question that comes up for me even when I am doing interviews. When I get interviewed, people say, how, like, uh, do you still remember that event? It, does it fade into a memory after time has passed? And, um, or how do you hold on to it? So what I often try and explain to people is that if you truly understand what that event is, you can hold on to it for all your life and uh, you don't lose it over time. But a lot of people believe that you, it fades over time. So let me elaborate a little bit more. Having an event happen to you, whether it's like an awakening, like a spiritual awakening, or something that happens to you through meditation, or something like the near-death experience I had, what it does is it blows you open to who you truly are. Because what I believe is that we are actually six sensory beings trying to be five sensory beings. We've all been conditioned and programmed to believe that we only have five senses. You know, we only have our sight, smell, um, hearing, touch, and taste. Sense of touch, taste, hearing, sight, um, and smell. But um, in actuality, we are six sensory beings. We have very, very strong intuition, but that intuition has been suppressed. And it's been suppressed because, um, because uh, for what, whatever reasons people have, uh, it's been suppressed because that's the way we've been conditioned to believe. We've been taught that only these five senses are real. And from the time we're very young, we are told that um, when we intuit something, when we sense something, when we feel something, when we know something to be true, we're actually told it's our imagination. And I'd love to hear from you. If you relate to this, I'd love to see it in the comments that yes, you are relating to this and you know what I'm, I'm talking about, that you've been told it's your imagination. So your whole life, you have suppressed it. Now, even those of you who've been lucky enough to live in homes or with families that welcome this kind of thing, that embrace it. Those of you who have not been told it's your imagination. The problem is, even if you know it's not your imagination, you're living in a paradigm, in a world that doesn't support this sixth sense. So there's no language to describe it. And when you try and give it language, when you try and talk about it, you're the one that is labeled as being the woo-woo or the crazy one. I mean, I know I experienced that. When, um, when I had the near-death experience and shortly after coming back, um, I, um, I started to share my story and I was invited to share it in medical circles because it happened to me in a hospital. So this was back in 2006, 2007, when I first started sharing it. And the people in those circles, um, they made me feel that I was 
like a, a, an alien or from outer space, that what I was talking about was really woo-woo. They made me feel that it was my imagination, that it was my brain making up stuff. Now, here's the thing. Even if my brain was making up stuff, they, the doctors, the medics, they could not explain away the fact that the cancer had just disappeared. And what I was trying to tell them was what it was inside me <clears throat> that created the coherence or the understanding within me and within my body that caused the cancer to heal. But they kept telling me, these are two different things. Yes, you had a spontaneous healing. We don't yet understand how that happened, but what you saw, what you felt, what you heard, that was your brain. That was the dying brain. That The brain releases these chemicals um, when it is in, in a coma or when it is dying or when it is at the last stages of life. And this is what caused you to have those images. And, uh, and so they would try and explain it away. So anyway, um, I found myself caught in a situation where I was on the circuit of speaking to these people, but I kept feeling I had to prove to them that what I was saying was true. I had to keep coming up with words and trying to prove to them. One day it dawned on me that if they've decided that what I'm saying is not true, there is no way that I can prove it to them. And it dawned on me that it wasn't my job to try and prove it to them. All I had to do was to live according to what I had learned. That's all I had to do, which is a tall order. It sounds easy. I had to live according to what I learned, but it's a tall order because what I learned is that I am a six sensory being. In fact, we all are, but I live in a paradigm that is created by people who believe that we are five sensory beings. It's created by people who believe that we're five sensory beings for people who are five sensory beings. Um, so it's a tall order trying to live within that paradigm. So I decided to embrace the fact that I am a six sensory being and live as a sixth sensory being. And if people chose not to believe me, that's okay. That's really okay. I wasn't going to let that hinder me. And that's what I started to do. And as I started to do that, that's when my life started to unfold in amazing ways. And so if you've had a transformative experience and you're having trouble convincing people, don't. Don't try and convince them. Just live your life as a sixth sensory being. And let me tell you a few things that I think that could help you. So first of all, living as a sixth sensory being, what this means to me is, um, let's use our imagination a little bit. Let's imagine that from the time you were young, from the time you were a child, like when you were born, you had sight, you were able to see. But imagine if everybody around you told you, you have to close your eyes, keep your eyes closed. And you would say, but why? I can see things. And they would say, no, it's your imagination. What you're seeing with your eyes is untrue. It's not real. You see, this is exactly what we were told when we used our sixth sense. We were told it was our imagination. So imagine if you were told that when you were using your eyes and you were seeing things and you were seeing colors and you were seeing the sky and you were seeing rainbow and people just kept telling you, no, it's your imagination. If you really want to learn how to be, navigate the world, if you want to be realistic, you have to close your eyes. See, this is another one that people use. You've got to be realistic. Um, so you started to close your eyes because you believed them. You believed that that's what it meant to be realistic. And you started to navigate the world with your eyes closed. Everybody around you had their eyes closed because that's what they were taught. From the time they were young, they were programmed to live with their eyes closed. Now imagine trying to create things with your eyes closed. And if that's what, how everybody has lived in, in the generations before, we would have created systems that are for people who live with their eyes closed and how to navigate this world with their eyes closed. So although we would probably have heightened intuition, 
we would not be using our sight. So we would still be five sensory beings, but instead of our sight, we would have heightened intuition and we would navigate the world this way. But here's the thing, because our eyes are closed, we would have no idea what colors mean. What does the word color mean? We wouldn't even have that word in our language. We wouldn't have colored pencils. We wouldn't have crayons. We wouldn't have paints. Um, our world would be one of different, completely different from the world we have right now. We wouldn't know what it means that the sky is blue. The word blue wouldn't exist. Um, depth of field wouldn't exist. You know, so basically the world would be created by blind people for blind people. Now imagine if you had this experience, this huge um, awakening where your eyes opened and you allowed yourself to open your eyes and you said, wait a minute, there is a whole world that we all have access to. But if you guys keep your eyes closed, you won't be able to see it, but you all have access to it. And, and so you start describing it, but your words are limited because we've not created words to describe vision, to describe colors, to describe distance and depth of field because no one can see those things. So your words would be limited and you would be shot down because you would be told it's not true, it's your brain playing t tricks on you and so on. Now, if you kick this up a notch and you think in terms of that sixth sense, our intuition, which we have, been, we have not been encouraged to use, we don't have enough words to describe that sixth sense. Whereas babies are born with the sixth sense. Animals have it. We have it. But the reason we don't um, embrace it, cultivate it, experience in it, immerse in it, is because there's no language to describe it. And we're afraid of getting shot down. We're afraid of being called woo woo. We're afraid of the onus being on us to try and prove its, ex its existence. Just like imagine in that world where everybody has their eyes closed, the one person that opens their eyes, how are they going to prove to everyone else that if you just open your eyes, there's this whole world that exists. How are they gonna prove that there's such a thing as colors, that different things have different colors, that birds fly in the sky, that the sky is blue. How are they going to prove it? There's no way. Um, so in the same way, we struggle to prove that we are six sensory beings, that we have intuition. But those of you that are empaths, those of you that have had experiences, you know this. And the reason you struggle to hold on to it is because you live in a world of five sensory beings. And this is why I want to share with you, I've had my fair share of being called woo woo or of being told that it's quackery or whatever. I, um, you know, particularly in the beginning when I first started sharing it, I feel so blessed that today more and more people believe me and e including doctors and oncologists, I get letters from people who say they, they actually recommend their patients. I get letters from healthcare givers and doctors and oncologists uh, who tell me that they recommend their patients to read my book or to watch my videos. And I feel so blessed. So anyway, if you are one of those people that knows you are a sixth sensory being, I want you to use your imagination further and think of it this way. Um, so actually, more proof that we're sixth sensory beings, think of your pets, your animals. I had a pet named Cosmo who used to be at the door waiting for me five minutes before I walked in the house. It's because we were connected and so um, and he knew five minutes before I came home, even when I was a, a mile away, he knew I was going to be home in five minutes. So if you, um, if you use your imagination and you were aware that, you, that we are six sensory beings, here's what you would see. You would be able to detect that we are all connected as though we are all part of one great web. Like we're all connected. And you would know this. And imagine if you knew this as clear as you could see it with your physical eyes. Now, if this sixth sense, if it was embraced by everyone, we would develop a whole language 
to describe different aspects of it. We would develop a language to describe different levels of our emotions to dis and to describe how we feel when different things happen to us. We would have a language as broad as our visual language, as broad as, for example, when you open a box of colored pencils, imagine those amazing boxes, these huge boxes of colored pencils where there's like 240 different colors. Every single pencil has a word to describe it or a combination of words, but every color has a name. If you did not have eyesight, if every single one of us did not have eyesight, all those colors would not have names. In the same way that if your sixth sense kicked in, and if everybody's sixth sense kicked in, we would have to develop a whole language to describe the whole range of emotions and the whole range of feelings and the whole range of new things we would be discovering that goes with the sixth sense. That's how big it is. That is a whole huge arena that we have blocked out. We've blocked it out of our existence. Once you start to open up to it, once you allow yourself to be called woo woo and let it roll off your back, you will realize there is a whole world out there that you have access to. So now, um, here's how I would like you to imagine this whole world. So imagine if all your emotions generated a life force energy and they either depleted your energy or they expanded your energy. Imagine if your life force energy had colors. Also notice that in other languages, like in, uh, in Sanskrit, life force energy has a name. It's called prana. In Chinese, it's called chi. In Japanese, it's called ki. In English, there's no word for it. We have to describe it. We have to use three words. We have to call it life force energy because in English, it's dismissed. It's not a thing. It's not even important. This is what I mean. But actually, it is important. It's so important because your life force energy determines the state of your health. Right now, we are so focused in five sensory living that we determine the state of our health by using machines and um, devices for earlier and earlier detection of cancer and, and stuff like that. That is so five sensory. That is so physically focused. One day we'll look back on this and say, oh my God, this is so archaic. We will, our detection devices will actually be measuring our life force energy. I'm sure, um, um, rudimentary versions of this probably exist somewhere. There are probably people developing this in their basements and their back rooms, but our medical system does not allow these kinds of devices to be taken seriously. One day we won't allow our current devices to be taken seriously and we will use devices to measure life force energy and to measure what it is that makes us feel alive and vibrant so that we can do more of that. And we will measure these so that we can actually become vibrant to the point of health. So if your health is failing and if you actually knew which activities, which emotions, what is it that is causing your life force energy to go down, you would start to um, eliminate those things from your life and you would introduce more things that cause your life force energy to go up. That is kind of like the medicine of the future where we really realize that, hey, we are six sensory beings. There is a life force energy which we can actually access, see and feel if we allow it to. Maybe at some point, as I said, we'll develop devices to measure it, but you can tune in right now without those devices and measure it for yourself. You can actually tune in and feel how strong that life force energy is for you. Um, I know kids feel it. I know animals feel it. And I don't know how many of you know the story of the Boxing Day tsunami. I think it was back in 2006, 2005 in Bali, where um, this huge tsunami wiped out most of the island of Bali. But most of the city of Bali. Um, but what was noticed was that 
animals. There were very, very few animals that were wiped out. It was mostly people, humans and their houses because the animals could actually sense this tsunami coming in and they all climbed to higher ground. Elephants all herded to higher ground. And it's because they're connected. They're tuned in to this web that we are all a part of. We are all connected to. And do you know that things like, for example, when you say yes, when you feel like saying no, when you feel like you don't want to disappoint people and you feel that you are taking on more than you can handle and you burden yourself with obligations, things like that, that actually depletes your life force energy. And continuously doing that is what can actually cause um, issues or cause you to become drained, which can make you more susceptible to picking up illnesses and viruses because it can actually cause you to deplete your immune system. So imagine if you were in tune with your life force energy. The other thing is when you love yourself, you're actually increasing life force energy. But not only are you increasing life force energy for yourself, but because we're all connected, you're increasing it for everyone. Because what you're putting into the web is what you're putting into yourself, sorry, is what you're putting into the web for everyone else. So if you are putting into yourself depletion and toxicity and bad feelings and you're draining yourself down, that's what you're putting into the world, into the web for everyone, because we're all connected. And what I would like to do is, um, you know, because I've kind of moved on from needing to, um, to prove all the time so that people who are immersed in believing that we are purely five sensory beings, I'm kind of done trying to prove that no, we're six sensory beings. I would rather work with people who know we are, and I would rather work with you in showing you how to tap into it and how to la live this way and how to access it more and more and how to sense that web that we're all connected to. I'm much more interested in doing that than in constantly trying to prove to people who have decided, no, we're only five sensory beings. Um, because that is that in itself is very depleting. And when I deplete myself trying to do that, I am actually contributing that, not only that very energy, that depletion energy to myself and to everyone else. And this is why I advise all of you as well, those of you that know we are something so much more, those of you that know that we're connected to something bigger, I advise you to explore it. Explore it with me, explore it on your own, but explore it and be an inspiration so that people look at you and say, oh my God, I wanna live like that instead of trying to beat yourself over the head, trying to explain it to people um, because it's very hard. It's very hard to explain it. Um, now I'm ready to take your questions. I'm sorry if I was long winded or anything. As I said, I am jet lagged. I've just come back from a trip, a long haul flight from Pune, both Danny and I. I have a couple of photos lined up that I'd love to share with you. I'm gonna to turn to Danny and ask him, um, should we go to the questions first or the photos first? Uh, there's actually a couple of people, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of your viewers who are writing in with different words and different languages yay. for life force energy. Oh, yay, I like that. You may recognize the first viewer. All right. Ibis! In Africa, it's called Ache. Uh, is that, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Ache. So Ibis, by the way, is the director of the cruises that I do, of the events that I do on cruises. And the next cruise I'm having, which is in June, which is an Alaskan cruise, is where I am actually going to delve deeper into exactly what I just talked about. I want people who are into this kind of thing to come on the ride with me because we are going to explore this, this being six sensory beings. We are going to explore what it means, what it's about, um, how being aware of the sixth sense can actually help us. It can ha help us to take us to the next level. It can help us to heal illnesses because we can heal illnesses from understanding it from the broader perspective. What is it? 
in our energy force? What are we doing that is depleting our energy force that is causing us to feel or experience this illness? Which takes me also where a lot of people say to me, um, what about children who get illnesses? What about pets who get illnesses? They, it's, um, they're not, uh, children haven't lived long enough to feel fear or to stop loving themselves. The same with pets. So if you realize that when the reason why I tell you to love yourself is because it increases your life force energy. When you increase your life force energy, everybody around you increases their life force energy. Children are very sensitive, just like you were when you were a child. You were aware that you were a sixth sensory being. But when you're a child, you don't always interpret the energies around you correctly. So if there is turbulence going on around you, just think back to when you were a child. If you were living in a place where um, there was strife and there was turbulence and maybe uh, your parents were having problems, you would pick up on that energy and you would misinterpret it. The more sensitive you are, the more of an empath you are, the more you pick up on it and the more you start to believe that you have something to do with the negativity around you. You may start to believe, as a child, you may start to believe that you are going to be abandoned or that it's your fault that things that are happening around you are happening. And so when children get sick, um, it's very often it's because they're picking up on things around them that are not theirs. This is what empaths do. As an adult, you do it. I did it as an adult. I got cancer because I was picking up on stuff that is not that was not mine. This is why I actually share my message. This is why I want you to know that you are a sixth sensory being and it's important to awaken to it because when you don't know it and you are an empath, you do pick up on stuff that is not yours. Pets do it, children do it. Um, so the way to help people, the way to help your pet, pets, the way to help children is to help uplift them and also to uplift yourself because they're picking up on your energy. So this is why it's really important that you actually do what uplifts you and then bring your presence to your child or to your pet. Uplift yourself and then uplift them. You know, just like on the airlines, they tell you, put your own seatbelt on before helping others. Uplift yourself because you are bringing that energy to them. And thank you, Ibis, for posting. You reminded me um, about the cruise and, and uh, I am so excited about it because I just can't stop thinking about it and talking about it because that's really where I want to, um, I, I really want to spend seven days living with people as six sensory beings and that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, let's go to another one, another comment. Um, do the key to eliminate illness is to raise, I guess you mean so. So the key to eliminate illness is to raise your life force energy. Yes, in many, in many cases, unless there is a different reason for your illness. And I want to be clear here. Many of our illnesses are just picked up by, um, you know, by energy by what's happening around us, by stress, which is reduced life force energy, um, by feeling drained, by depleting our immune system, many things like that. Of course, um, there are things like you can, you can hurt yourself, you can fall down, hurt yourself, you can do something at the gym, you can put out an, a muscle. So, excuse me. So there are all these kinds of things as well. But the stronger you are, so let's put it this way, the stronger you are, the more life force energy you have coursing through you, the better you are at handling every situation. Um, sometimes situations come because it's just part of life. It is just part of life for you to have an experience. But you are better able to handle those experiences when you have life force, strong life force energy coursing through you. You're more likely to get depleted if you haven't taken care of your life force energy. Now, in, in a lot of cases, when you take care of your physical well-being, you do want to use good nutrition. And I'm someone who 
I don't talk much about nutrition. And the reason I don't talk much about nutrition is because there is a lot of nutrition information out there. And I don't want to muddy the waters. There's a lot of nutrition experts. I don't claim to be a nutrition expert. However, what I do when it comes to nutrition is that I do it the other way around. I don't go research the nutrition first. I actually turn inward first and tune in to my intuition, my life force energy, my sixth sense. I tune in to being a sixth sensory being first and then ask myself, what does my physical body need right now? What does my physical body need right now? So I go at it the other way around. I, um, I don't go out there as a nutrition expert. I would rather treat it from the, let's know we are six sensory beings first. The physical body is not who we are, but it is what we use to navigate this world and express ourselves. Let's use our sixth sense to intuit what the body needs and then listen to it listen to it. Now here's the thing, I take in a lot of information about nutrition, but I don't apply it all the time because if you try and apply everything, you will get confused. I used to think, this was before when I got cancer and even before I got cancer, I used to think that when I was bombarded with all this nutrition information that I had to do everything. You don't. You can take it in much like a library has a lot of books, but many of the books contradict each other. You will have a book on Christianity and Hinduism and Judaism and atheism and spirituality. They don't all agree with each other, but the library contains all those books. In the same way, your brain, your mind can absorb all that information, but just take it in as information. It doesn't mean you have to apply all of it in your life. What happens is if you just take in that information as information, then you tune in to who you really are, which is your intuition. Your intuition is that connection between who you think you are and the real you, which is part of that big web, part of the universe, the universal you. And when you tune into that, that is, that will access information that you've gleaned, that you've read. In other words, it'll access your library and tell you what applies right now. Oh, this is what you need right now. This is what you need to eat now for the condition you are feeling now. You need to up your protein. These are the proteins that are good for you. Or you need to go vegetarian or whatever it is, it'll tell you what you need. Your intuition will tell you. Um, so also people often ask me, what about outside expertise? What if I don't know what's right for me? If you're confused and you don't know what's right for you, it's okay to seek information outside. I do it as well. I have wonderful t team of people. Um, there's a woman by the name of Anna Saffron who is my homeopath. I seek her guidance. There's another lady who does acupuncture and she does cupping and she's also a clairvoyant. Her name is Daganit. I seek her counsel pretty often. We do need counsel outside of us, but I seek counsel from people who I know are intuitive, who are also connected to the web, who are aware of their sixth sense. Those are the people I seek counsel from because I know that what they tell me will be the best for me because I am aware of that web as well. In other words, we, they might be experts in certain areas that I'm not, but we're all equally part of this sixth sense web. I don't like to seek counsel from someone who is not aware of our life force energy um, and who will just go purely for the physical. For me, that doesn't really work. So if I really need, even if I need a medical doctor, I would rather seek a medical doctor who's more open that there's more than just medicine. Um, let's go to another comment or question. Please tell us more how we can wake up and develop the dormant sixth sense. Judy Huang. Hi, Judy. I always love your comments and posts and everything you do. So thank you. So one way that we can wake up more is that um, if you just imagine, so I, 
I do a little, a kind of a visualization. And after a while, you don't need the visualization because you start to feel it yourself. So if you can imagine that there is this big ball of light that emanates from your heart and it emanates uh, out of your heart and it's a ball. So it emanates on all sides of you, up, down, and it surrounds you, this light surrounds you. So it's almost like you're inside the light. Now that ball of light that emanates from your heart, let's say that's your aura and you can give it a color. You can give it any color you want to, absolutely any color. And if you imagine that you could really see your aura, it would be, that's what it would be. It would be emanating from your heart and it would be all around you. You can give it one color or you can give it a bunch of colors. Um, you can have green in it, violet, indigo, gold, white, whatever you like. Now, if you sit quietly and you think of that aura emanating from your heart, um, you can actually visualize how big it is by how you are feeling right now. So you just ask yourself, okay, how big is my aura right now? How am I feeling? And then you will get a visual of how big it is. But here's the best part. If you now start to tell yourself that I want, I want it to be bigger, I want more life force energy because it helps not only me, but it helps everyone around me. Whoever I touch will be touched by this great life force energy. So I want you to visualize it to be really big. As you visualize it to be big, you will find yourself actually getting uplifted, more and more uplifted. And as you go and talk to other people, you will notice that they will feel it. They'll feel you're uplifted. Now, if we take it a step further, you can start visualizing the people around you. So for example, if you were to encounter a small child who's just been hurt, when I say hurt, I mean, for example, a child who's been bullied at school. If you could see their aura, their aura would look really small in that moment. And if you were able to see it, and actually if you train yourself, you can. You can look at children and immediately you can recognize whether their energy is really low or really high. And the best thing you can do for a child is to keep their energy uplifted. So if you see a child whose energy is really low, go and talk to them. Go and talk to them and tell them how amazing they are and how beautiful they are and take an interest in their life and ask them what happened today? What's going on? Why do you feel so low? Let them get it off their shoulder. Tell them the world is not so bad. If you see someone, a teenager, an adult who feels down, go and increase the size of their aura by talking to them and start to notice how they light up slowly you'll be able to detect it. And it is a matter of being aware of it and becoming more sensitive to it and you will start to see it and you'll be able to change the world because um, people who are lonely for prolonged periods of time, people who have a shrunken aura for prolonged periods of time, it starts to reflect on them physically, on their physical body, it starts to deplete their, um, their immune system, and they are the most susceptible for illness. And this is why I say it's so important for our medical paradigm to start to embrace this kind of thinking if they want to see true healing taking place in their patients. If they really want to see healing taking place in hospitals, hospitals have to start becoming a place of upliftment where people can expand their energy field and their aura so that their bodies can then follow suit. Because really, your energy field, illness starts in the energy level long before it manifests in the body. So if you really wanna see healing, it really is about expanding your energy field. One way to do it is to do what brings you joy. Another way is to spend time with people you love. Another way is to do things that you love. Speaking of spending time with people that you love, uh, this is the reason why I, I go and see my mom every six months and my family and my brother and my sister-in-law in India because I miss them when I'm away. But at the same time, I love this work I do. I love talking to you guys. I love sharing my message. I love my friends in this field. I love my tribe who 
talk the way I do. I miss that when I'm away from them. My friends like Ibis Kaba, who just posted. Another friend of mine, Julie Reiger, who's just written a book called The Ghost Photographer. She actually photographs um, smoke and things and and things like that and she can actually see her deceased loved ones she's just written a book called the ghost photographer she is the most fascinating person that i've come across in recent times you've got to look her up julie reiger um, but speaking of connecting with people i love i do these things because it uplifts me um, i want to share a couple of photos of my family members um, so i was just in pune um, still getting over jet lag. And here's a photo of my brother, my brother Anoop, who if you've read my book, Dying to Be Me, um, that's him, that's me, and then that's my sister-in-law on the other side of me, has sharing a meal in Pune, India. And then I have a photo of me and my mom, which I shared earlier this week, uh, or sorry, earlier last week. Uh, she's the person who I really go to see in India because my brother can travel and come, come here and see me, but my mom doesn't really travel anymore. She's 91, 91 years old. Um, she eats cookies every day of her life. <laughs> if I try and tell her they're bad for her, she'll just go, meh, <laughs> life's not worth living if I can't get my cookies. She eats chocolate every day of her life. Uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, so now you know why I love chocolate. Um, so that's my mom. Hi, mom. If you're watching, bless you for being around. I feel so blessed. Um, and so this is my way of saying, please connect with your loved ones. There's nothing better to increase or expand your energy field than to connect with people you love, whether they be your pets, your family members. Let's go to another question. I saw that you had one almost queued up and ready for me there. Um, but there are so many people in council. How do we choose? Marianne Frost. Hi, Marianne. You, <clears throat> so when it's people in council, you mean, I'm guessing you mean people who are healers. You just go with who you resonate with. You really have to go with who you resonate with. And don't be afraid to ask a few questions before you sign up with somebody. Because the best kind of counselors, the best kind of healers, are the ones who are able to see you healed. They're the ones who know that you have it in you and all they're doing is reminding you who you are and holding the space for you to become your full and expanded and healed self. Um, those are the best kinds. Those are the ones you want to go to, not the ones who make you depend on them and make you feel like you um, that you can't heal without them. Those are the ones that weaken you. You need to feel empowered. Your healers need to make you feel empowered. Um, I can recommend a couple of people who I go to when I need uplifting. So um, I'm very happy to do that. And, and they are people who, yeah, I go to, to really, because they really do, uh, they really do help me in air, you know, because we all have areas that we're not experts in. Even when you can tune in, even if you're psychic, even if you're clairvoyant, there, there are areas where you need help from other people. We're not experts in everything. So, um, you know, so don't be afraid to try a few different people. But here's the thing. The dangers of somebody who believes that they know more than you do, they, they can use fear to keep you with them. Don't stay with someone out of fear, out of the fear that, oh my God, um, this doesn't feel right, but I'm scared if I leave them, then I'm going to get even sicker or even worse. That is the wrong reason to stay with a counselor, healer. You're staying with them out of fear. That is actually depleting your energy, not increasing your energy. So that, that is a reason to get out. You need to be with healers and counselors and doctors and uh, health caregivers who uplift you because being uplifted is part of the healing process, not those who make you feel fear because fear depletes your energy. Um, let's go to another question. Any advice in someone dealing with feeling like a failure always? Oh, that's, that's always really, really sad. I would say they really do need to seek 
counseling. Um, I hope it's not you, uh, Haima Joshi, but whoever it is, they really do need a lot of encouragement. But here's the thing. Um, they need to be surrounded by people who are uplifting and who are themselves uplifted because someone who feels like a failure also um, if they're around people who are quite sensitive and not very strong in themselves they can bring those people down as well because we tend to align ourselves to the people around us so it's really important for someone who feels like a failure to align themselves with people who can be uplifting for them. And sometimes um, you really need to be around people, someone like that needs to be around people who will treat them well and with sensitivity. So um, I wish I could have a conversation with you about it. One day I will do a different kind of event, a different kind of live event where we can dialogue back and forth because sometimes your questions leads me to want to ask more questions to get more clarity as to where that question is coming from. But in the, uh, in the meantime, in answer to your question, I would say that that person would need counseling and counseling from somebody who can actually uplift them and, um, and, you know, someone who makes them feel good just to be in the presence of the counselor. You see, here's the thing. When we feel good, when we feel really good, our, um, our aura, our life force energy is expanded. And when our life force energy is expanded, we bring that with us wherever we go. This is what we're bringing into um, into every room we go to, every venue, we're all actually connected. We bring it with us and everybody can feel it. We don't have to say a thing and our very presence uplifts the room when we are feeling uplifted. And I know many of you know what I mean. I know that you know people who uplift a room and I know you know people who bring down a room. This is why I always say, uplift yourself, uplift yourself. And if you're feeling down, we all feel down sometimes. Don't judge yourself for it. Allow yourself to feel down. Go out in nature. Nature is a harmless way of uplifting yourself where, you don't, um, where you're not bringing anyone else down. And I'm not saying that when you're feeling down, don't go out in front of other people. It doesn't mean you're going to bring them down. People who are uplifted are pretty strong. They will be able to uplift you without compromising their own energies. Um, and this is why it's so important to keep taking care of ourselves. So let's go to one last question, shall we? And the last question is from... I can see it barely from here. And then, nope. I don't mind if you punch up comments and things. I don't mind if you punch up people's feedback, comments. I love all of that. Sorry, sorry, if, sorry if we're a bit slow today. We were a bit slow starting. I really wanted to do this. And the reason I wanted to do this is because next weekend I'm in London. I'm speaking at the uh, Consciousness of Human Evolution. I often get that name wrong. It's T. CCHE Festival. I'm speaking at that next weekend in London, Consciousness and Human Evolution, with great revolutionaries like Greg Braden, Rupert Sheldrake, Lynn McTaggart. Um, and so I'm off to London on Wednesday, uh, just barely over jet lag from coming back from Pune. So I won't be around next week, and that's why I really wanted to do this today and say hi to all of you. And I want you to know that I read your comments, and this is what inspires me to do these. Many of you want to know more how to go deeper, how to go deeper into expanding to your full self. That's what I want to talk about more and more. I want you to become aware of it. I want you to, in the meantime, use your imagination because your imagination is the key to the universe. It's the key to your higher self. It's the key to your connection to everyone else. Your imagination has been stifled since you were a child. But if you allow your imagination to shine, you will start to see it. You really will. And use your imagination to assign colors to your emotions if you want to. If you could 
strap a contract i mean if it were if there was such a thing as a device a contraption that measured your energy at every level of emotion you would actually be able to see it and you would be so much more careful uh, about your decisions you would make different decisions your world your life would look different just like i said if you had lived in a world where everybody's eyes were closed created by in a world that was created by everybody whose eyes was, were closed the world would look different it would lack color it would lack so much aesthetics um, because because everybody's eyes are closed and there's so much they can't see in the same way if you lived in a world where your sixth sensory self was fully awakened your life would look different so the way to start doing that is to start using your imagination. And when you use your imagination, and if you imagine you could see your emotions, imagine you could see your aura, imagine that every time you said yes when you mean, when you mean no, imagine if you could see what your emotions do. Imagine if you allow yourself to be abused on a prolonged period of time, for a prolonged period of time, and you were are too afraid to walk away from physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. Imagine if you could see what it was doing to your life force energy. If you could see it from the onset, from the beginning, from the start, you would walk away. Your life would look very different if you could see your life force energy and if you could see your emotions and if you could see love and how the love emanates and what makes it shrink and what makes it grow. If you could see all those things, you would have made very different decisions and your life would look very different today. So I invite you to start seeing that way. And let's go to one final question. Have you heard of the medical medium? His books teach how to cure Epstein-Barr. Yes, I have heard of him. He's really well known, but I haven't, um, I haven't read his book. And I have to admit, I haven't read much about Epstein-Barr and about Epstein-Barr disease. I know that uh, it's pretty huge and I think he's fabulous and I love what he's doing. Uh, so it's great. And if he resonates with you, that's fabulous. Maybe one day I'll get together with him. So uh, if we don't have any other final questions, I, I think that what I will do, ah, Thank you from Omela Bertrano Togmas. This again has been such a great time spent with you, Anita Mirjani, and thanks to your husband, Danny. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Omela. Um, and Paramjit Tobi, where are you in London next week? So I am in uh, London at the, we'll, let's pull up that, um, here we go, here we go, it is, Gosh, I forgot the venue. It is at a hotel and I... If you go to the uh, URL, you'll find all the details. Okay, so if you go to this very URL, anita.com slash C-H-E, all the details will be there as to exactly where the venue is. Um, and it's, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I love these events where I get to meet all my, uh, my tribe, basically. Greg Braden's like a brother to me. Um, so I would love, if you're there, if you're there Paramjeet, please come up and say hi, give me a hug. I love hugs. I'll be signing books. I'd love to see you. I'd love to see you at any of my events. I love doing live events because we get to share energy together. Nothing like seeing you all in person. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please know that I will be back again in two weeks to do another Facebook Live. And I look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, have a great week and a great weekend and see you all in two weeks. Bye.